If you have a free moment, then spare a thought for Australian academic Dr Kylie Moore Gilbert. Her situation is grim. She's about to start her third year as a prisoner in Iran. Currently, she's being held in an unimaginably squalid, coronavirus-infested jail outside the capital, Tehran. Her crime? The Iranian regime says she's a spy. Kylie emphatically denies the accusation, but all of her appeals have been ignored or rejected. And that means her only hope now rests with our federal government coming to her rescue. Kylie Moore Gilbert is the Australian who went to Iran and never came home. Arrested on charges of spying, the quietly spoken university lecturer has been held for more than 700 days in one of the worst prisons on earth. A nightmare ordeal that shows no signs of coming to an end. I, an innocent woman, have been imprisoned for a crime I've not committed and for which there is no real evidence. Tonight, the failure of Australia's quiet diplomacy. We've got to change things up. We're running out of time. Two years of secret negotiations that have come to nothing. All that matters now is what needs to be done to bring her home. And I would argue, a lot more. Please, I beg of you to do whatever it takes to get me out. Here is Dr Kylie Moore Gilbert, a Middle Eastern researcher at the University of Melbourne. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. So tell us a bit about Dr. Career. Kylie Moore Gilbert is a lecturer in Islamic studies at Melbourne University. At some point, it's yeah. very dangerous to predict the future. Of course, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, this this region is so volatile. Known for her fierce intellect and gentle nature, she was a rising young star in the academic world. I Meeting mean, Kylie is always a bright spot because she's such a positive personality and, and a genuinely decent person very gracious and, and humble, but she's no fool. She's very, very sharp. Professor of Global Islamic Politics, Greg Barton, is Kylie's colleague and friend. He remembers the last time he saw her. It was August 2018, when the two caught up for coffee and Kylie shared the exciting news that she'd soon be off to Iran. Was there anything particularly risky about this trip? Nothing at all that seemed perfectly straightforward. I wasn't worried for her, I was glad for her. Kylie had been invited to a week-long conference in the city of Qum, one of Shia Islam's holiest sites and a centre of religious learning. As a guest of the Iranian government, she was thrilled to be heading to a place she'd long dreamed of visiting. There are other places, of course, uh, in the Middle East particularly nowadays, where it is very risky, but that was not the case in 2018 with Iran. In a fateful move, Kylie extended her trip to do more research. It was then that one of her interview subjects reported her as suspicious to Iran's revolutionary guard. As she prepared to board a plane home, she was arrested, charged with spying in a trial held in secret and without evidence Kylie Moore Gilbert was sentenced to 10 years in jail. What went through your mind when you learned that she'd been arrested in Iran? Well, horror and, and, and immediately a sense of wanting to speak out. And then I was told that there's a lot of work behind the scenes quietly trying to secure her release. And what do you think of these charges of espionage against her? It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So we're talking really about trumped up charges here? Yes, completely spurious charges. Kylie was sent to Evan Prison on the outskirts of Tehran, a jail used to hold political prisoners, notorious for its harsh conditions and brutality. It's a place that journalist Jason Rezaian knows only too well. It's nearly five years since I was released, um, and I'm, I'm still dealing with the, the emotional and psychological scars of that experience. Jason was a correspondent in Iran for the Washington Post. In 2014, he was arrested at gunpoint, along with his wife, on trumped-up charges of spying. We were abducted from our home, uh, kidnapped, essentially, 
brought to uh, a prison that had no oversight uh, and thrown into sol solitary confinement um, and very quickly thrown into a process of interrogations that was designed to dehumanize you, uh, to make you uh, essentially respond as though you were a scared animal. And it works. Held for 544 days, Jason's experience gives very clear insight into the hell Kylie has endured for the past two years. I was taken to a section of the prison known as 2A, which is exactly where Kylie was taken uh, and was held until uh, just recently. It is a smaller section of the prison run entirely by the Islamic uh, Revolutionary Guard Corps. You know, th they can do whatever they want to the, the people being held inside of there. The solitary confinement cells are tiny. You know, it's a meter and a half by two meters. There's no furniture. Uh, the lights are on, very artificial lighting on 24 hours a day. That's it, that's your world. The only times that you're brought out of there is for interrogation uh, and, and for a 20 minute blindfolded walk in a yard going back and forth from, from two walls. So Kylie spent nearly two years in one of these smaller cells. You know, imagine being kept in uh, a confined space for 23 hours out of the day. Um, it's the epitome of torture. Coming up... She was in a terrible prison. The jail transfer. She's in even a worse prison now. The dooms, Kylie Moore Gilbert... I worry every day that she may be running out of time. ...to even more misery. I feel like I'm abandoned and forgotten. And why Canberra must act now. These are hostage takers. They are holding her until they get what they want. That's next on 60 Minutes. I have no friends or family here. And in addition to all the pain I've endured here, I feel like I'm abandoned and forgotten. From the confines of Iran's Evan prison, Kylie Moore Gilbert wrote a series of letters over a six month period in 2019. Dear sir, I'm an innocent woman. I've been imprisoned for a crime I have not committed and for which there is no real evidence. For fellow no academic evidence. and friend, Greg Barton, they're a sign of both her bravery and resilience. Ultimately, we can't hear from Kylie, but this is her voice in these letters. That's right. It's a voice for those who know Kylie. It's familiar. It's that gracious, gentle, polite, and highly intelligent and articulate tone. So that is Kylie. That, the good news is she's there in these letters. Smuggled to the outside world, they're a window into her ordeal. The daily challenges of life in solitary confinement, her hunger strikes, mind games by her captors, and deteriorating mental health. Towards the end of August last year, she writes to say, I think that I am in the midst of serious psychological problems. I, I can, can no, no longer stand the pressures of living in this extremely restrictive detention ward anymore. How difficult would it have been for her to even write those letters? And what would have been involved in smuggling them out? Pen and paper is officially contraband. So it, it comes at great personal risk, and it should be an indication of how um, helpless and uh, hopeless she feels. Little is known about Kylie's treatment or state of mind since the beginning of this year. But last month, after 678 days in captivity, came the grimmest of signs. She was transferred to Karchak Prison, in the desert south of Tehran, regarded by human rights groups as the worst prison in Iran. I think if I was sitting where Kylie was right now, having been moved from Evan prison to Karchak prison, I'd be thinking to myself, nobody's doing anything for me. For former prisoner Jason Rezaian, it's a clear indication that Australia's softly, softly approach is failing. I can't say if it's a quiet diplomacy uh, approach because I'm not confident there is actual diplomacy taking place. If there was, you would see uh, a series of uh, measured improvements during the time that she's been in prison, and I don't think that um, we've seen any convincing sign that that's the case. Part of the problem is the complexity of negotiation. 
The Revolutionary Guard is Iran's most powerful military force. A state within a state, they control the economy, military affairs and intelligence. Professor Greg Barton says it is they, not the Iranian government, who hold Kylie Moore Gilbert and they who will ultimately decide her fate. We can do this, but it's going to involve creative ways of finding out what's going to satisfy the Revolutionary Guards, who really are the final arbiters. I mean, there's no sugarcoating this. This is a life or death situation. They worry every day that goes past uh, between COVID-19, uh, brutal fellow prisoners, breakdown in mental health, breakdown in physical health, um, that she may be running out of time. So we're just about to back the car down and hit the road. I think it's going to be a long drive today because there's apparently lots of police checkpoints that you have to stop at. Australia's approach has worked before. In June last year, Perth travel bloggers Mark Furkin and Jolie King were arrested at gunpoint for flying a drone at a military zone near Tehran and spent several months in Evan prison. Eventually, a deal was struck to get them out. Within some weeks, they were released in, a, in an apparent prisoner swap. Um, why not Kylie? Why is she still there? What does Iran want here? What would they want from Australia? I, I don't know enough about uh, Iran-Australia relations to know what Iran would want, but I'm, I am, I'm, I'm confident that the Australian government knows what Iran wants. A month ago, the Australian ambassador to Iran was able to visit Kylie in jail, the Department of Foreign Affairs later issuing a brief statement. Dr Moore Gilbert is well and has access to food, medical facilities and books. We continue to seek regular consular access to Dr Moore Gilbert. I think that that's one of the most irresponsible things I've ever heard a diplomat say. There's absolutely no way you can convince or should try to convince the Australian public that this person is doing well. It's 700 days that she's in prison. She was in a terrible prison. She's in an even a worse prison now, right? That is um, mind boggling. It's unacceptable. Uh, it, it, it's the sort of thing that, um, that no public should be comfortable with. This most recent visit by the Australian ambassador in Iran to Kylie at Karchak prison, the ambassador said that Kylie was doing well. I mean, most people would think that's farcical. Is that just diplomatic speak? You know, well is a very relative concept. I think, um, you know, you, you can't say that anyone who's been held for two years, uh, you know, could be in a good state. Let us all do everything we can to let Dr Moore Gilbert and her family know that we will not abandon her. Liberal MP Dave Sharma has been lobbying hard on Kylie's case. He's convinced the Australian government is doing all it can in incredibly difficult circumstances. In these sorts of cases, I mean, it's important not to mistake fury for action or confuse, you know, loud noises and, and fireworks for effectiveness. You're a former diplomat, you've worked at DFAT, you've been in these situations, you've had these tense and delicate discussions before about prisoners stuck in foreign countries. What's it like? How challenging are these conversations that you're having? These are challenging conversations because um, ultimately you're, uh, you're seeking a favour of some sort from the, the country in which Australian National is being held. And it's a delicate dance because, um, of course, you don't want to offend their dignity or you don't want to criticise their own systems of government and because if you do so, uh, it actually makes it more difficult to have that person uh, released. Surely something has to change here because whatever we have been doing for the past two years hasn't worked, clearly. Things have gotten worse for her there. Yeah, I agree. I don't think we're closer to her release now than when she was first held two years ago. Um, and we all need to consider what more we should be doing with this case. I am not a spy. I have never been a spy and I have no interest to work for a spying organisation in any country. There's all sorts of theories about, OK, you know, Iran made a mistake. They thought she was doing something that she wasn't. They'll come to the, their senses and let her go. Uh, you just need to give them an opportunity to save face. None of that ever happens, right? There is no saving face. These are hostage takers. They've taken your fellow countrymen hostage 
and now they are holding her until they get what they want. Thanks and to the pressure of the US government, after 544 days, Jason Rezaian's own nightmare in an Iranian prison did eventually come to an end. The hope for Kylie Moore Gilbert is that sooner rather than later, with plenty of hard work and perhaps a little luck, she too can be on her way home. I think it should be uh, gut-wrenching to every single person in, uh, in Australia and I just hope that more people hear about this and, um, and cry out in support of, of their fellow citizens. How much time does Kylie have? <sighs> I think that the truth is that she could be stuck there for a very long time if uh, the Australian government doesn't do more uh, to engage in, in winning her release. But I'm hopeful that they will and that she'll be home very soon. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.